Hello my dears and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making this beautiful Marion Martin dress fit for a spring fling. All right my dears, today we are going to be diving into the dress that was picked on the community page of my YouTube channel last week. You all voted if we had three different dresses up that were options, varying styles, and this is the dress that won out. So it's what we will be tackling today. Now this was meant to be an Easter dress, but if I'm being honest, I worked on Easter. So unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to wear it. However, with spring in the air and a lot of family dinners coming up, I am excited to make this beautiful garment to wear to one of our lovely family functions. Now, when I did pick this pattern, I was imagining pastels, I was imagining tulips, and I really wanted to find some fabric that had those elements in them. However, I couldn't quite find the match that I was looking for, the type of fabrics, the colors, they weren't quite blending nothing that I had in my stash was really working. And so I went ahead and I did give up on pastels and I went with navy blue. And the reason that I did is because I think it's a beautiful classic look and because I happened to find about three quarter yard of this gorgeous blue fabric with white or kind of ivory um, parchment colored flowers and dots. And when I paired it with this navy blue fabric that I did have in my stash, it reminded me of blue china that my mother and my grandmother had. And so I thought, well, that's perfect. It's going to still have that patterned bib front that is shown in the original design and it's not going to be crazy. I'm not going to be doing a purple dress with an orange bib front that's really going to stand out and look like it was slapped together. <laughs> so this is my plan, is this beautiful navy blue with the navy blue and white flowers in it. Now, of course, in a pattern like this, you don't have to follow what they've drawn on there. If you want, you could make the entire dress out of a solid fabric or a printed fabric from the top to the bottom. However, because this was a pattern that you all voted on and it is illustrated with the bib front of the dress being in a different pattern, I wanted to go ahead and respect that and assume that that's what you all wanted to see. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Let's get stitching. All right, I have taken the opportunity. I pre-cut out all of the pieces for this particular pattern. This pattern was in my stash. It's been in my stash for many years and I really wasn't certain what the condition of the tissue pages were and the condition of the instructions. And so I really wanted to get everything out, iron it out, make sure I had all of the pieces for this dress before we got started. And thankfully everything is in the envelope. The tissue paper is a bit fragile and I can tell that in the past, I don't know how many times this dress was made, but it was most certainly at one point crumpled up and kind of tossed to the side. And then it was kind of smoothed back out and folded a little bit better before it got put into the envelope. But some of the pieces are a little bit fragile. As a result, I am not going to be making the jacket that goes with this dress. I will simply be making the dress as these were the pieces that were in the best condition. Now, if I still wanted to go ahead with this pattern or with any vintage pattern that I have, if the pieces really and truly are very, very fragile and I'm concerned, of course, I can always get out my tracing paper. I can always smooth them out gently and carefully to the best of my ability and then trace things out and go from there, which I have done in the past. For the dress port portion of this, I don't think it's necessary. The instructions, however, are extremely delicate. And so we will be very, very careful with those today. The edges are, um, they're not quite uh, crushed and shattered and falling apart at the edges, but they're getting close. I, in fact, I may choose to scan these instructions at some point and retrace this pattern if I wanna keep it or use it again, just because I am a little bit concerned that 
opening and closing this many, many times could cause it to be a little bit damaged, and I think it's a beautiful pattern. With that being said, this particular pattern is a sure to fit pattern. It's a Miriam Martin special, and so they actually have very large pattern instructions. You can see here. <clears throat> And something that I really like about the Marion Martin instructions is not just that they're large, it's that this back section is practical dressmaking hints. This back section, if you are new to sewing or you've been sewing for a little bit, but you, you know, maybe you learned on the seat next to your mother or grandmother, aunt, uncle, whatever, and you'd never really learned some of the finer points, you can use the sewing machine and you can read a basic pattern. These older patterns by some of these dressmakers like Miriam Martin, they go through a variety of things, detailed instructions on seam finishes, on binding, on buttonholes, on flipping pieces inside out to create seamless pockets and things of that nature. And so some of these older patterns really can give you a great insight into reading vintage patterns, as well as expanding your knowledge on sewing. And I know I have learned a lot from these vintage pattern instructions myself. And so I think it's lovely to see when we do have a big sheet here with lots of instructions, how they would have been taught, what they would have been talking about, and how I can translate the instructions then into future patterns that I am working with. Now, the actual instructions for the dress, I will admit, aren't terribly in depth. You get like a quarter of the page. The rest of it is how to cut it out, do you have all the pattern pieces, and then those extra goodies. But they do still have a decent amount of instructions and they write things out pretty well in the Marion Martin instructions. So these were definitely for home sewists and they are meant to be thorough enough for someone with a basic knowledge of sewing. Um, you don't have to have a huge in-depth knowledge. So let's dive in. The first thing that they would like us to do is to get started on the bodice front, on this bib front here. <clears throat> Now this does have scalloping across the top here, and there is a variety of ways that you can deal with scalloping in patterns. One of the ways is doing a binding, another one is to do piping, like a rolled piping, and that would keep it. But the absolute easiest way to do scalloped edges is of course to have a material on the back that is lining it to stitch it and then flip it, push out all those beautiful scallops and press them down nice and firm. In these particular instructions for it, they only really have us cutting out a very small section of the scallops here in the center to line in the front and the rest of it, they're assuming we're gonna go ahead and iron down and the raw edges of that will be hidden by the sleeve pieces. For myself, I did go ahead because they are anticipating that you're gonna top stitch the entire front of this. I did go ahead and cut out lining material and I cut it out for the entire front of this particular bodice piece because to me that seems easier to do one long sewn line, flip it and push everything out, make it really truly clean than to try and nip all of the edges and iron them all over and then top stitch it into place like that. That's just what seems easier to me is to do it this way. So because I don't want the front of this to be extremely stiff, I did use a lining material. It is very, very thin. It is nice and flowy. It's not gonna make this look off when it's laid against the other fabric. As my other fabric is a linen-like fabric and so it's going to have quite a bit of drape versus this cotton, which is already going to be a little bit stiffer. Now. I didn't mind having the difference in the two types of material for this small amount of the dress because I think that the front should have a little bit of structure as it is a bodice. However, with that being said, I don't want it to be crazy stiff. Structured, yes. Stiff, no. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open this up, pin the bodice and the lining together with the right sides together. And then I am going to simply stitch across the top of the scallops. 
I'm not stitching down the sides or anything like that. The rest of the raw edges will be hidden as the rest of the dress is tucked in together. All I need to do is finish the scallops. So right sides together, stitch that line, then we will flip everything, push all those beautiful scallops up carefully with our fingers after we trim around the edges and iron it beautifully flat. Then we can top stitch it and get ready to do the rest of the bodice front. All right, and here we are with our beautiful scallops for the top portion of our beautiful spring dress ready to go. Now this does still need to be top stitched. However, I would like to wait to do that until I have attached the front shoulder pieces for this because I don't wanna top stitch across this entire row of scallops and then have to stitch in the ditch, trying to top stitch in that exact same line when I am attaching this to the shoulder pieces. Instead, I would rather do it all at that time so it's one seamless stitch line that is not broken up and isn't thicker and chunkier in some areas than it is in others. So for right this minute, we're gonna set this aside and start picking up our pieces for the rest of our bodice. Now, okay, let's take a moment to review some of the step-by-step -step instructions that we have here for this particular dress. We've already gone ahead and done the scallops. Here they've had this section lined, then they were wanting you to iron down and hand baste the rest of these scallops down in preparation for it being top stitched over the top of the shoulder pieces, as you can see here. That's later. What they'd like us to do, they'd like us to set this aside, and what they'd like us to do before we get here is to attach the shoulder seams and then add all of the lining pieces. And if I am being entirely honest, I'm not really sure what the merit in doing it this way is. It seems to me that this is going to be a bigger hassle, attaching here and then trying to put these linings into place. And so if I'm entirely honest, and anyone who's been on my channel for a while is going to know, I think we may need to make a departure from the instructions. It is not that this is a bad way to assemble the garment, but I do think it is a more complicated way than is absolutely necessary. I think it will be easier to apply these particular pieces first, flip them, press them, do a bit of understitching to make sure they stay in place, and then attach the shoulders. And if I'm entirely honest, I may choose to attach this front scalloped piece to these shoulder pieces before I attach the shoulder pieces to the back bodice. I think the reason that they have you doing it in a different way is because they anticipate you adding buttons. That is part of the original design. As we can see here in this original picture, there are buttons across the shoulder here. I am not certain that it is necessary for them to be functional. And at the very least, I'm not sure it's necessary that they all be functional. And so I'm not sure I'm going to be following the instructions to a T. Instead, I really do think it will be easier not to be fighting such a large amount of garment all at once and go ahead and put different pieces together. Assemble the entire front of the bodice and then attach it to the back bodice once all of the lining pieces are set into place. And then I can also take a look at the neckline at that point and see if I need these buttons to be functional. Because I might, if the neckline isn't large enough, we may need them to be functional to get our head through. But if that's not the case, I don't really see a reason to force them to be functional. If I can get my head through without that, then I'd rather simply close this top up and stitch the buttons over the top as kind of an accessory piece. So let's go ahead and get these lining pieces into place, get them stitched, flipped, understitched, pressed, and um, basted down so that we have lots of clean, lovely edges, and then see where we're at from there. 
All right, my dears, I have all of the pieces roughly pinned in place. I do not have them stitched firmly into place yet because I kind of wanted to do a quick test fit, take a look at things on my mannequin. I also did go ahead um, with the top shoulders pinned into place completely all the way up to the neck, tried to get it over my head and I actually can get it over my head without any problems. However, this is lovely, this is fine. It's a little bit high, but that's actually appropriate for the period. What I'm not sure I'm loving is this. How high the back of the bodice is. Now, I do understand that it's all quite high and uptight and this is period appropriate and so forth, but I do feel like it's a little bit too high for me. I feel like it kind of creeps up the back of my neck instead of sitting nicely across the back of my neck. And so even though I have completely stitched this into place and flipped it and understitched it and everything, I think I may be taking this out and dropping it down just a bit. I think that will make me happier. Now, if I do that, that does run the risk of these buttons needing to move out, which may change this here on the front and this neckline. And the truth is, I think I might be okay with that. Um, even if that does mean that I have to trim off a little bit of excess on this side by moving this out a little bit, I think I may find myself a little bit happier with it if we do have to do that. So let's take a quick look together at what that might look like. So if this was moved out a little bit to accommodate a slightly wider neck in the back, that's gonna look like this. We can trim off a little bit of this excess here at the end of the sleeve, that's not a problem. And then we can take that same distance that we've moved it up top and move it here on the bottom. And so instead of this lining up over here closer to the center, we can maybe even move this out here to the edge of the scallop like that. And of course, if we do it equally on both sides, I think this is gonna simply fall a little bit nicer across the back like this. And we did take out almost a full inch in doing this. You can see here, it's about three quarters of an inch. So it's not an insignificant amount of fabric. And then simply moving the buttons over a little bit to accommodate that as well. You can kind of flip it on to the front. And I may even just try to quickly flip this onto myself and make sure it's still lining up nicely across the front. But I think overall, I'm going to like this garment better if I bring the back of that neck down a little bit, move the buttons out to accommodate it, and then move these side pieces out so that this front scalloped piece continues to lay nice and flat across the front of the bust line. So if we were to I think that's gonna lay a lot nicer. And now I think we really do have a pretty good start. Now it is getting pretty late here at my house. So this may be it for me tonight. We may have to come back to this tomorrow during the day. 
but I think we have a really good start to our pattern and I can't wait to continue stitching this lovely dress together. Hello my dears, we are back. It has been a few days. I ended up having some family emergencies come up and then I did have to work, but I am back now and very excited to finish our beautiful Miriam Martin dress. I did have some time to think over the last few days about things I would like to do differently with this dress as I was looking back at some footage and looking at the way the navy blue printed fabric was laying against the solid navy blue fabric. I wasn't really loving the top shoulder portion. In particular, I didn't love that the two colors weren't quite blending nicely and I felt strongly that the fact that they were so close in color but not quite matching really muddled up the beautiful scallop work that is across the top of the dress. So I made a small change, hear me out, but don't we think this is better? I think this is gonna be really lovely. And this is not white, this is kind of a cream color. So it's the exact same cream color we are finding in the flowers of the print. And we will still go with the solid skirt and the solid back. But I felt like this, having these cream shoulders up here at the top, really makes the scallops across the top of the dress pop. And then keeping the darker colors down along the bottom really kind of draws the attention up to this beautiful detail work. So I think I'm gonna make this change and I'm pretty excited about it to be entirely honest. So let's get stitching and try to get this beautiful top bodice piece put onto our uh, parchment colored, ivory colored <laughs> fabric here at the top to create the shoulders. Once we have done that, we can go ahead and put the back of the bodice onto the front of the bodice and then get started on the skirt. All right, my dears, I have the shoulder pieces attached to the front of the bodice here. So now we need to get this piece attached to the back of our bodice. Um, and it does, the pattern itself does want us to start with attaching at the shoulder seams before we go to the waist portion. So remember we did go ahead and widen the back collar. And so we are going to line up the top of the shoulders with our new width here. And then after we have done that, we will trim the sides of these ivory pieces as I did go ahead and cut out the new ivory pieces with the exact same pattern that we had done the previous navy blue pieces. So everything is still gonna match and line up beautifully, but we do wanna make sure we make that small modification and move everything out. When I attached these to the bodice, I also did move them out just a little bit to widen this front area so that it will match up a little bit nicer with the shoulder pieces as well. So there won't be some huge deficit or gap or it won't be puckering and pulling in at the neckline in a funny way. All right, my dears, the next step in our bodice construction here as we've got our shoulders connected, our bodice front connected, is we need to add our gathering stitches here to the front and backs before we add these side seams here, leaving a section open for zippers or snaps on one side. So we'll go ahead and look at our deviated marks here and do a quick gathered stitch here and here, as well as here and here. So one across the front and on each side and one across the back on each side. All right, my dears, we need to close up these side seams here as are shown in the instructions. Now we have this little turn, this little jut out, which kind of creates this little sleeve. We can see that here in this drawing. Now we would in other patterns that are similar, that might have a short sleeve, we might come up this side seam, turn and then go across to do the underarm. However, I wanted to point out in this particular pattern, even though it's very tempting to do that because we have done that with other patterns in the past, we do not want to do that here. They are not indicating they would like us to come across this seam. What is anticipated is that this will be rolled in here and that this area here will create 
that double roll to create a seam to hide all of those raw edges. So when you're coming up along this pattern, stop here, don't make the turn and head across under the arm. Instead, go ahead and leave this open so that we can fold it in and then get that completely tacked down either by hand or top stitched, whichever is your preference. All right, meteors, we officially have a completed bodice. We've got our beautiful scallops. We have our shoulder pieces. We have the gathers put in around the waistline. And we've got the sides put together as well as our sleeves finished. So we can officially set this aside and get started on our skirt. Now this skirt is actually fairly simple. It is just in these lovely pieces, there's no gathering, there's no pleating, there's really, it's just a beautifully fitted skirt that is kind of a fit and flare. It's coming, it's nipping all the way in at the waist to meet the waistline of the bodice and then gradually floating away from the body in order to make room for the hips and the legs and to create a nice silhouette. So what we need to do is to go ahead and attach the front panels to the back panels. Now in this particular pattern, originally it was four pa panels, two front panels, two back panels. I did go ahead because the fabric that I have was wide enough to accommodate it. I cut the entire front panel out in one piece so that I could avoid a seam down the front. That's a preference of mine. Seams down the front of skirts were actually very common for the time period in which this pattern was made, but it's not a style I really love. And so when I can avoid it, I honestly do. And in this particular case, I think we can avoid it nicely and still have a very beautiful finished garment. It's not gonna really be altering the style of the garment at all. So I have one large front panel and two smaller back panels. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just get those put together, leaving a small opening in the side left where we're gonna be adding either a zipper or snaps. I also have a small opening in the top left of the bodice so that we can do that as well. So it will open up just a little bit in the side, giving us just enough room to sneak through the dress. Let's get stitching. All right, my dears, it's official. We have a finished bodice and we've got a completed skirt, which means now we need to go ahead and attach the bodice to the skirt. So we're gonna do this the regular way where we flip the skirt inside out, stuff the bodice inside, pin everything together, making sure that our centers are lined up and our side seams are lined up and then go ahead and stitch it together with the proper seam allowance. We are, like I said earlier, gonna be leaving the left side open. That is where we are gonna be adding either hook and eyes or snaps or a zipper, and that's gonna help us get in and out of this beautiful dress. All right, my dears, let's talk wrap up on our beautiful Marion Martin dress that we made for spring. Now this dress and this pattern were chosen on the community tab of my YouTube channel. And so I want to say thank you to you all for voting for it because I absolutely love it. I think it turned out really lovely and I think it will be a beautiful addition to my closet. Let's go ahead and break down what we did this week and a few of the changes that we made to the pattern. The largest change that we made to the pattern was actually to the bodice of this pattern. We started out by dropping the neckline down in the back. 
originally the neckline had come all the way up onto the back of my neck and there was a very small opening out of the front of the bodice and it really did feel like it was not only riding up on the back of my neck but it was ill-fitted it was not sitting where it was supposed to sit and so i did bring it down a full inch across the back in doing that i also did move out these sections on the front these shoulder tabs in order to meet the back section which did effectively widen the neckline but not in a way that would be uncharacteristic for the time so we did stay period appropriate but we did widen things out a little bit by bringing that neckline down in the back in doing that i did need to trim off a little bit of the excess fabric from the sleeves in order to keep them appropriate and as written in the original pattern it wasn't a big deal quick trim and we were back on our way now originally we were going to be doing this entire dress in navy blue with just this front bib portion in the contrasting fabric as it was shown in the picture on the front of the pattern itself as i was looking at that footage i really felt as though the scallop detail across the front of the bodice was lost as the navy blue fabric sitting on top of the other navy blue fabric was really making it appear very muddled on a whim i dug through my stash of fabric and happily found this beautiful parchment fabric that matched the parchment color of the flowers in the printed bodice section here and so i did go ahead and make that change and swapped those two out and now you can really truly see the detailing across the bodice i felt like that was important because that scallop detail was one of the reasons i chose this pattern and i suspect one of the reasons many of you voted for this pattern as well so i'm happy that i did make that change or alteration to what we had initially planned to do with that being said because this bodice is a flat piece bodice which was very common for the time period when this pattern was made in the late 40s early 50s adding a very light color across the top and a darker bottom certainly widened my shoulders more than i honestly anticipated that they would and this particular style of dress this cut was really meant to do that it was meant to widen the top of the shoulders in order to make the waist look smaller. Um, and then of course, when you have wide shoulders and you're nipping in at the waist and then your skirt floats away, it creates an hourglass silhouette, whether you've got one naturally or not. And that is certainly what they were going for in this time period. I don't know if I make this again, if I would do such a light color on top because I feel like it like, woo, really, broadened my shoulders um, and so if you are thinking about making this pattern and you are anticipating that and you have broader shoulders that you maybe don't want to add quite so much emphasis to just maybe keep that in mind that if you do a very light shade up here across the shoulder caps it is going to really truly widen out those shoulders quite a bit other than that we really didn't make a ton of changes to this particular pattern pattern the skirt is historically made in four pieces because of the width that fabrics were available in because the width of fabric that i had was wide enough i did go ahead and lay the front panel on a fold and that allowed this front panel to be cut out in one which prevented me from having a seam running down the front of the skirt and that is a look that i prefer in my dresses while it was not uncommon to have a seam down the front center of a skirt during the time that many of these patterns were made it's just not something that i love so when i can avoid or eliminate that seam in the front i like to do that and i certainly was happy to be able to do that with this particular pattern the last and final thing that i changed was i did not make a belt to go with this dress even though it did have a stripped pattern piece in the instructions itself it said dress can be worn with a commercially made belt and so i thought you know what if they said i could do it I'm going to do it because I'm running low on time and I want to wear this dress. I happen to have this taupe colored belt in my closet. And so I went ahead and went with that. And I think it's a good option for this particular dress because once again, it's drawing this same color palette down around the waist. It is breaking up these two or these two colors of navy blue from the print to the solid fabric. And I think that creates a nice division. It also allows this top portion to really be bloused out 
because this is a commercially made belt. Many of the belts that I have made historically have not been quite as rigid as the belts that I can purchase in the store. And this particular one has some really, really nice structure. And because this top portion is really quite blousey and it really needs to have that structure below it in order to maintain that, I'm happy that I have this belt in my closet and I'm honestly happy I went with it as opposed to taking more time to make about a belt out of one of the materials that I already had. So I hope you all enjoyed the make this week. I certainly love it and I can't wait to have another excuse to wear it, perhaps a brunch out with my husband and my kiddos. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like vintage patterns, sewing and knitting, please hit that like and subscribe button. I would love to have you along with me on my journey. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Bye-bye.